Hi, I'm Kanya. And yes, this is me on top of a skyscraper in Chicago. And that is a massive storm coming in my direction. I was born in Thailand, and my parents divorced when I was just a few months old. Mom left, and Dad raised me on his own. He worked at a very fancy international hotel as part of the waitstaff, and it was a super fun place for a small kid to hang out. I spent days playing in the pool, learning to say hello in a million different languages, and every time I was hungry, I just had to turn my puppy eyes to the cook. Here, the clients didn't even touch it. They said the salad was too green. When it was too warm, Dad and I would go to the roof, eat cow lam, and watch the stars. Wow, they're so bright. It almost looks like it's day. But the brightest star is sitting beside me. Aw, Dad. You'd think I'd miss Mom, but Dad was extra caring. Every morning, Dad made pancakes and braided my hair. He also fought Cook to have first dibs on the hotel's lost and found box. And if there was something super nice, like that shiny pink bag both Cook and I wanted, they ended up pulling each other's hair. I wanted to do something nice for Dad, so when his birthday came up, I broke my piggy bank to get him a present. But I barely had anything. Well, just enough to buy a cheap lottery ticket. It's okay if I don't win. It's the thought that counts. But as the announcer read the lottery numbers, Dad's eyes grew bigger and bigger. And then he let out a loud scream. We had actually won the freaking lottery! Dad knew his greedy relatives would come after him like bees to honey when they found out about his new wealth. So he decided to move to the U.S. with me, and we settled in Chicago. I was 12, and my life had turned upside down overnight. America was cold, and I wasn't used to Western customs. The first time he took me to a fancy restaurant, there were so many knives, forks, and spoons. What do you mean I can't eat spaghetti with chopsticks? They're noodles! But the biggest change was my dad. He invested the money in very successful startups, and we went from being really rich to filthy rich, and we moved into a massive mansion. Anything you want, you let Sebastian know, and he'll get it for you. Sebastian was Dad's personal assistant, and he was glued to his side. Every time I wanted to spend time with Dad, Sebastian was there too, tall and serious like a scarecrow in an expensive suit. He even went with us to the amusement park and followed us on the roller coaster. Does he really have to be here? Yes, I need him to hold my tie down so it doesn't flap in the pictures. Gosh, just buy a tie clip. I wanted Sebastian gone. I started giving him impossible tasks, so when he failed, Dad would get rid of him. Sebastian, I want a copy of the next BTS album, the unpublished one. Sebastian, I want croissants every morning, fresh from Paris. But Sebastian always delivered. One day, I was stuffing down a box of fried chicken and plotting my next request, when suddenly I started choking on a chicken bone. Sebastian was immediately by my side, performing the Heimlich maneuver till I spat it out. Oh my god, you saved my life! Just doing my duty, miss. After that incident, I started warming up to Sebastian, thinking of him as my grumpy guardian angel slash fairy godmother. When I started high school, I was nervous about whether my new classmates would like me or make fun of my accent. I'd heard American high schools were brutal. But then I met Diana, a total firecracker. Oh, you're from Thailand? I've always wanted to see the Festival of Lights. Yes, it's pretty amazing. We should totally organize one for our school, right? Everyone loved the idea. And while building lanterns with my classmates, I also got to make new friends quickly. As we watched the lanterns float into the sky, I was so happy to bring a piece of my culture to my new home. Diana became my partner in crime. She introduced me to a world of karaoke nights, greasy hamburgers, baseball games, and sleepovers. We spilled secrets about our crushes and talked about my upcoming 16th birthday. You know your dad is planning a massive Sweet 16 party, right? To be honest, I don't really care about a big party. I'd rather do something meaningful, you know? Sebastian helped me organize a day of volunteering with my friends at the local animal shelter. Dad, however, couldn't help going overboard. He donated a new building to the animal charity, complete with VIP grooming stations. I guess even the three-legged half-blind cats deserve a blowout. And they look great on my TikTok. Here, let's grab a selfie. At the end of the day, Dad rolled in the biggest cake I'd ever seen. But suddenly, he tripped and fell face forward into the cake. After a moment of horrified silence, I started laughing. 
I guess now everyone knows how sweet you are, Dad. He laughed too, and I hugged him, getting frosting all over myself. Best birthday ever! But the very next day, Dad was dropping me off at school when our limo got surrounded by police cars. An officer handcuffed my dad as half the school watched and recorded videos. You're under arrest for fraud. What? That's impossible! As the police took him away, I frantically called Sebastian, but I couldn't get through. Please, pick up Sebastian. You're the only one who can fix this. Pick up, pick up. When the police released Dad without charges and without money, he told me Sebastian had transferred everything into offshore accounts, disappeared, and left us with a mountain of debts. We weren't the first family he'd stolen from. He was a con man wanted in 17 countries. This is all my fault. I should have never trusted him. I have a lot of friends. They'll help us out, Dad. But I was so wrong, and I discovered that at Diana's doorstep. Wow, you really have some nerve showing up here. What? Oh, you thought we could still be friends? Your dad's a criminal, and who knows what you've been up to. Before, you were rich and exotic. Now, you're poor and toxic, so scram. She tried to slam the door shut, but I pushed her in so hard that she fell on her butt. My dad's not a criminal. Then he's an idiot who got scammed by a butler. I left before I ended up punching her stupid face. I couldn't believe I ever thought of that snake as a friend. Luckily, not all of my friends were as horrible. One helped Dad find a job as a night guard, and another let us stay in her uncle's apartment. I moved to a public school, and things were not so bad. Except for one thing. The debt collectors. They hounded Dad and even followed me everywhere. One even pretended to be a teacher to get into the school and took my bag. Hey, give me back my bag. You mean my bag? Where's the money, girl? Are you stupid enough to think I carry it around in my school bag? Sebastian took everything and we're broke, you moron. I don't believe you. Tell your dad to return our money soon, or things are gonna get a lot worse. Of course, I didn't tell dad. He was already crushed and looked worried all the time. The only time I saw him smiling was when I sent him a selfie I'd taken of us on our old hotel roof. We didn't have much in Thailand, but we were happy. I just had to remind him that happiness was possible here too, but I didn't know how to do that. But then a few months later, I was working part-time at a coffee shop when I overheard two customers chatting about an upcoming meteorite shower. That's it! Dad loved the stars. If I took a picture of the falling stars, it would remind him of us on the rooftop of the hotel in Thailand. It would cheer him up for sure. Chicago boasted a towering skyscraper over a hundred stories high. The roof, reserved for the top floor hotel clients, was just the spot I needed. On the night of the meteorite shower, I sneaked into the hotel's kitchen wearing a borrowed chef's uniform from work, then went to the lost and found. Bingo! I found a perfect fake fur coat and hat. I channeled my inner Paris Hilton and got to the elevators, where a bellhop boy was stationed. He stared at me suspiciously all the way up. You look familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? Unlikely. I don't really mingle with the bellhop crowd. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with the bellhop crowd? Oh, nothing at all. I'm sure your family's very proud of you. Your mother must have dreamed of a future for you where you press buttons for a living. He turned away silently, and I hopped out of the elevator as we reached the top. I felt bad that I'd offended him, but I was just selling my rich brat roll. The view from the top was amazing, but the wind was incredibly strong. As time passed, it intensified, and a thunderstorm loomed on the horizon. Just as I was about to give up, a multitude of shooting stars lit up the sky. I took countless pictures before running back home, and I burst through the front door. Dad, look! Dad! I stopped short when I saw the whole place had been trashed. I ran into the kitchen where I found a strange woman looking anxious. Uh, who are you? What happened here? And where's my dad? Oh, thank God you're here. Kanya, I, well, I, I'm your mother. What the what now? I didn't even know she was American. I know you don't remember me, but your dad asked me if I could take care of you, so here I am. Excuse me? You're about 16 years too late. I'm sorry. I was so young when you were born, and your dad and I didn't really work out, so I thought leaving was the best solution. I knew he'd take good care of you. You're right. 
He did a great job, and I want him back. I ran out and called my dad crying. I'm sorry it has to be this way, sweetie. The debt collectors are getting too dangerous, and I need to draw them away from you, so I'm leaving for good. I love you, and I'll miss you terribly. You have to leave this house immediately and go stay with your mom. And you have to do what she tells you. I may not be able to call or text you again. No, Dad, wait! But he had already hung up. Dad was gone. And now I had to leave my house and my school and go live with this stranger at the other end of the city? And she forced me to wear a wig and contact lenses to make myself unrecognizable. I did what she said, but I just wasn't ready to accept her as my parent. I made it my life's mission to find Sebastian and make him return our money so Dad could pay off his debts and come home. I started visiting police stations every day, but no officer wanted to help me until I bumped into... Hey, it's you. Uh, Bellhop Boy? You recognize me? Yeah, your disguise isn't that great. Also, my name's Enzo and you owe me a tip. I'm so sorry about that encounter. How about I buy you an apology coffee? better make it an extra large. It turned out that Enzo had started a new job at the police station as an IT assistant, and he recognized me from the viral video about my dad's arrest. So now you want to catch this Sebastian guy? Yeah, but I don't know how or where to start. Hmm, let me see if I can dig up some info. You'll really help me? Let's say I'm tired of asking. Have you tried switching it off and on again every time something doesn't work around here? Like a couple of Sherlock Holmes, we started tracking famous rich people's social media accounts because such people were usually Sebastian's targets. He's like a tick, looking for the fattest victim to suck on. But Sebastian was also sly, and he knew the police were on his tracks. So no matter how many pictures we looked at, we couldn't find him. Until one day... Wait, wait, isn't that him on the yacht with Siley Myris? OMG! Yes, even with the mustache, I'd recognize that sleaze bag anywhere. Okay, let's zoom in on the boat name and... Found him. He's in Greece, posing as a pet masseuse for TikTok canine stars. The next day, I bought a flight to Greece with the last of my savings while Enzo alerted the local police. Together, we descended on Sebastian. Drop the poodle. You're under arrest. Give me back my money. Your disguise is dumb, and I've already gambled all the money away, stupid. I kicked him in the shin as the police carried him off. I was happy he was caught, but the money was gone. With no chance to pay off our debts, Dad would be on the run forever. That night, I went walking on the beach, and I saw the sky was filled with stars. I took a picture of it and sent it to Dad, but he didn't reply. After I returned to the States, I decided to start mending things with Mom. It wasn't easy but she was the parent I had now, and I could see how hard she was trying. She even had a box with my baby clothes and pictures that she'd kept all these years. Slowly, we started to get to know each other, and she was really cool. As for Dad, I would send him a new sky picture every night, even though he never replied. He did make me realize I loved taking pictures of the night sky. Enzo, who was still looking for his dream career, was now working at an electronics store. So I asked him if he could find me a good deal on a camera. Sure, but it'll cost you. Name your price, Scrooge. How about a date? Really? But what if you grow tired of me and dump me? I mean, you change jobs every two seconds. Yeah, but I'm sure dating you won't feel like work. For our first date, we went back to the skyscraper roof, and I took more night sky pictures. Enzo loved them and suggested I start an astrophotography vlog. And when I won a super fancy prize in a competition, I realized I'd become a professional. I sent Dad the picture of the prize announcement, but like always, he never replied. And I finally accepted that he was never going to. I invited Mom and Enzo to the award ceremony, and I caught her beaming with pride as she admired one of my pictures in the gallery. I'm so sorry I missed your childhood, Kanya. If I could go back, I'd do everything differently. We're together now, Mom, and that's all that matters. I love you. The presenter announced I was the winner, and Enzo walked me to the podium. I dedicate this award to my father, who made me discover my love for the stars. All the pictures I take, I take for you. I miss you. As I stepped off the stage and hugged Mom, I let out a tiny gasp. 
One of the waiters in the room was smiling brightly at me, and he was unmistakably my dad. He had tears in his eyes as he blew me a kiss, and then quietly left. And for the first time in years, I felt truly at peace, knowing dad was okay and always watching over me.